Hello gamers and welcome back to another quick episode of Solo Spelunking. And this will be a product showcase episode where I will introduce to you my newest project, the Solo RPG Framework and Toolbox for Space Opera. So uh, what is this? It is a collection of system agnostic gameplay procedures, generators and tools to ease the burden of playing your favorite space opera RPG solo. And in this video I will be flipping through the book and giving you a short uh, introduction into what is in here. But um, before I do that, um, I want to talk a little bit first why I even um, yeah, made this. Um, so for me, if I play solo, I find it helpful sometimes if I have some sort of, of structure, of, of framework or some sort of procedures that I can work with or that I can fall back on in case I should draw an imaginary blank, basically. Because solo RPGing, of course, it can be a little bit taxing and I go into, into all of this uh, also in the beginning of this book, in the introduction, where I talk a little bit about why I even made this and why you maybe or probably or maybe want to use it. So the thing is that if you play solo, you have to wear a lot of different hats. I mean, you are the GM, you are the player, you have to come up with some sort of, of story maybe, you have to interpret random prompts. Um, you, It's basically a lot more work and it's a lot more taxing than if you're playing in the group and you just have to sit down on a table and you play with your friends and you have a GM that provides you with all the narrative, with all the story and and you can just basically consume. Um, of course you also contribute by describing the actions of your character and by reacting to what is presented to you, but I think it's like 50-50, 50% consumption, 50% contribution Whereas in, in solo RPGing, there's almost no or just no pure consumption because you always have to also contribute to yourself to make it work. And this can be a little bit taxing sometimes. And um, so every once in a while, and this is what I wrote down here, I feel like I'm not up to it, maybe like after a long work day, but you still have that itch, you want to play, but you don't want to think too much, but maybe this is the wrong word, you want to have some something to, to rely on. And if you play fantasy, actually, there's a lot of stuff out there for that, because in fantasy you have hex crawling rules for overland travel that are pretty procedural, depending on what kind of game you're playing. You have dungeon generators that, that do a lot of work, so if you just want a quick dungeon romp where you just want to roll some dice, kill some monster, collect some treasure, all you got to do is, I don't know, throw in a random dungeon generated by a generator and, and off you go. And um, But space opera adventures, they're a little bit different and at least um, I think there's not much in the in a sense of that they're like set procedures out there for, for core gameplay elements or at least I'm not aware of them. So um, yeah, I wanted to do something along that line to, to ease the burden, but it's an offering. Um, it, it's not meant to be restrictive, it is meant to be used alongside your favorite RPG. And if your favorite uh, RPG, and I have to admit I don't know too many space opera RPGs besides all the incarnations of the Star Wars uh, RPG, uh, maybe your RPG of choice already contains some sort of procedural gameplay 
then by all means use that or use this or combine them use whatever you find more appealing to you so this is an offering it is meant to be supportive it's not meant to be restrictive so um <clears throat> what does it include well it includes some procedures for arriving and leaving planetary systems for playing in a city uh, it has urban encounter generators job generators uh, a bounty hunting um, yeah, system or procedure and it has a simple generation system to, to generate uh, space sectors like as a sandbox and it features a section on derelict vessels and stations which is sort of like dungeon crawling um, but in space if you explore like drifting derelict ghost ships ghost vessels and I finish up with uh, a random idea generator and an oracle so that you have an all-in-one package. So first, um, I talk about a few assumptions that I make regarding the setting you're playing in. However, these assumptions, if your setting does not meet these assumptions, it's no problem. You could easily use these procedures uh, for your system by adapting them. So I give you an example. Um, so this framework makes the following assumptions about the setting and one assumption is that faster than light FTL travel is common technology in one way or the other be it warp drive, hyperdrive, jump drive or whatever. FTL travel is what built the galactic civilization. So if you are playing in a hard sci-fi system where there's maybe only one solar system and no faster than light travel just use the procedures here for faster than light travel for interplanetary travel you could easily adapt them or you could just disregard them so i start off with making a few assumptions about the setting you're playing in so this is more space opera think more Star Wars, Star Trek, then hard sci-fi. <clears throat> and then after these assumptions, I go um, and outline some gameplay procedures for common gameplay elements. And one element would be if you arrive in a planetary system and you approach a planet. So um, there's a procedure that consists of you check for a random encounter and the chance for a random encounter on approach depends on whether you're in a high, low or medium security system. So these are the th three um, security levels this framework uses. And when you generate your sector, you determine the security level of every planet. And depending on the security level, you have a higher or a lower chance measured, uh, measured on a D6. Um, so it's either 1 in 6, 2 in 6 or a 3 in 6 chance. And you check for a random encounter. And if a random encounter occurs, you generate it with the system space and counter generator included here. And you resolve the encounter and re re you resolve the encounter using your own system and the rules of the system you choose. Then the next step is, and this happens only if you're in a medium or high security system, you check if a system authority vessel takes an interest in your ship and wants to inspect you. And this can of course be problematic if you're wanted or carry contraband. And there we have a 1 in 6 chance in a medium security system and a 2 in 6 chance in a high security system. So I wanted to decouple the random encounter from the security level. So um, let's say you are in a high security system. You have a very low chance of a random encounter, but a higher chance of being inspected or targeted for an inspection by system security. So depending on your play style, if you're more like an outlook, outlaw guy, smuggler, or if you're a law abiding guy, this might make a difference. So, and if you're targeted for an inspection, you again resolve the situation in a scene with the rules of your chosen system. And then if you evade the inspection, 
if you don't want to be inspected, you evade the inspection. Maybe you do like a little chase skill challenge, uh, evasive maneuvers, whatever. You roll 1d6 and on a roll of 1, they have, however, locked your transponder signature and you are then listed as wanted for evading an inspection. So um, this could be problematic later on. Then it goes to landing and here you basically have two options. You can do a regular landing or a shadow landing. So I don't think I have to explain a regular landing. A shadow landing is like a wild landing where you land somewhere away from the official facilities, like maybe in a clearing or canyon or in the wilderness around a city. Or if you're in a city planet, it would be like an abandoned factory area or storage lot or whatever. And this is, of course, to avoid planetary traffic control and security. So there you have to make a pilot check of medium difficulty. And again, you have to translate this to your system of choice. So whatever a medium difficulty skill check in your system is, use this. And if you succeed, you make a successful shadow landing. If you fail, traffic control picks you up and hails you and demands that you follow the official procedures. However, in a low security system, no one cares. You don't need to make a check. So then we have a similar procedure, which is shorter uh, for taking off. Basically there you only check for a random encounter before you reach the, I call it jump point, but the area uh, where you're far enough away from the planet where you can engage your hyperdrive. And then, fitting with the procedure, there's the system space encounter generator. And this encounter generator works in a similar way than the urban encounter generator. So I didn't just want to have a table with possible random encounters. I want to have a little bit more um, yeah, variety or, or um, combination methods. So uh, these encounter generators, they work like they give you a prompt. And this prompt features variables and these variables are rolled on corresponding tables. And through this combination of the different variables, you have a large variety of possible encounters. Of course, like every random encounter, sometimes the combinations don't make sense. In this case, modify them to make sense, leave things out. Um, this is just the way such random encounters work. So your prompt here would be your scanners pick up a descriptor object then that is, that meets, that experiences, whatever fits an activity either by a, against a or because of a descriptor object on a 1 to 3 on a d6 or the player's ships or ship on a 4 to 6 on the d6. So I like to simulate a living, breathing world where not everything revolves around the player. Maybe you just observe something on your approach that might actually not affect you. But um, as I've stated before, every random encounter is for me a chance, an opportunity for interaction that you can take or not. And they establish certain facts about the game world that are now present and that might have an impact on future happenings. So this is um, the system space encounter. Then here we have the, the tables where you fill the variables with. So different ship types, different activities, different descriptors, and you can combine them. Then we go to city gameplay. And there we also have a gameplay procedure, which states you choose an action to take, from the list of city actions and resolve it using, of course, your system, your rules. Then after every action, you check for a random encounter, again, depending on the security of the system. If an encounter occurs, you generate it with a similar generator, the urban encounter generator, and you resolve it. Then optional, you advance time of day by two hours. So if you track time of day, I just assume, or this framework assumes, that every action takes about two hours, but this includes maybe talking to different people, checking out different locations, and resolving possible encounters. And of course, you can adjust this up or down 
as you see fit. And this is also optional. If you don't bother with tracking time of day by the hour, don't worry about it. And then it goes to back to step one. You choose another action and you repeat the game loop. And then we have a list of the most common city actions. But then again, this is not a board game. This is a role playing game. So these are just actions that people from my experience usually take like for example buy weapons gear or equipment get a job or mission sell items recruit a crew member gamble pickpockets hang out in a bar uh, interact with a medic attack a slicer or similar character like with an expert visit a security office or posting agency to get a bounty make contact with the underworld to acquire contacts but as a filler, I also put down take any other generic city action. This is just for the gameplay loop, which says you take an action, you check for an encounter. You take an action, you check for an encounter. And this is basically how this works. And those actions that I listed here, I give you um, a little bit more context. And uh, I also came up with a nice little uh, gamble mechanic that I will showcase um, when I use this in my gameplay videos. So that's city gameplay. Then we have a rumor table for rumors you pick up in a bar. And this is already something I'm thinking about of, of changing. Um, if I, I th I'm thinking about transferring this also to some sort, not of rumor table, but a rumor generator with like a sentence, something like, have you heard in and then also using variables to generate different kind of rumors. I did this way back for fantasy in a fourth edition D&D GMs kit I made for myself, where I had a rumor generator where I listed different locations and different activities and actions on the um, Neverwinter, uh, the, um, uh, what is it, the Nantia Vale map and generated rumors. And I think this is better. So this is something that is that I already think about changing. So instead of a, a, just a rumor table, you might have a rumor generator. Then the same thing with the bar encounter table. So far it's a table. I'm also thinking about making it like an encounter generator again with these variables custom tailored to a bar or cantina environment. So, but for now these are tables. And then we come to the urban encounter generator, which then again uses a prompt. And the prompt is a species NPC is activity with a by a to a against a whatever fits species NPC again one to three on d6 or the PCs four to six on d6. And then you roll any die for an NPC and then on an even result it's female otherwise male. And here I elaborate a little how to interpret these results um, maybe in a more abstract way to make them fit. And then again, so here we have the tables that fill, fill these prompts to generate a variety of encounters. Then we have the bulletin board job generator and the bulletin board is for legal jobs posted by corporations, government agencies or wealthy individuals. You can access the bulletin board via the planetary data net. And we have different four different types of jobs. We got delivery missions, passenger transport missions, escort missions, salvage retrieval missions. So this is more like independent pirate uh, pilot work um, where you also again have um, these variables that you fill with these tables to generate the concrete job. Then we have the underworld or black ops job generator. This is where it gets interesting. So this includes classic underworld jobs, but also black ops by corporations or government agencies that are of the books. And here we have things like assassination missions. We have illegal bounties, which are bounties that are placed on a target by an entity, but it's not sanctioned by an official security agency. Basically, it's like an assassination. The difference is uh, in an assassination, you usually know where your target is located. And in a bounty hunt, 
you got to track it down first but basically it's just like a paid a paid hit if you want then we have smuggle missions we have debt collecting missions infiltration and sabotage missions infiltration and corporate espionage infiltration and theft infiltration and extraction so we got different kinds of infiltration missions and again with variables locations destinations and employers and here we have different tables for contraband for targets locations and employers then a section on bounty hunting which is the legal bounty hunting so bounties posted by official security entities and there we have a small little like a played out skill challenge system <coughs> So we have bounties that come in three categories, minor bounties, major bounties, and um, most wanted bounties. And then I outline how to randomly generate a bounty posting, where you first determine what type of bounty it is. Then you determine the bounty value randomly, um, depending on the category. And then, and this is where the metagame system comes in, you determine the number of tracking points needed to locate the bounty. And for every full 3000 credits of bounty value, you need one tracking point. And this is a metagame out of character information for the bounty hunting mechanic, um, which simulates other bounty hunters hunting for the same query, because usually bounty hunts are not exclusive contracts. Then you generate, of course, an NPC as the bounty target using the NPC generator in here. Or you choose a profession based on the committed crime, which you also roll up. And then with every bounty posting, you get an initial clue and an initial location connected to the target. And then you conduct the bounty hunt, of course, in role playing scenes by investigating the locations and following up on the clues. And at the end of the scene, you should generate new locations and clues depending on the outcome of your scene. And at the end of the scene, you make one final skill check, which is not really tied to, to your activity in the scene, where you could make different kinds of skill checks. So this is like um, to simulate your progress compared to other bounty hunters and there you make a skill check using the skill that played the most important role in 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 the scene you played maybe yeah and um, if you succeed at this check you gain a tracking point and if you fail you mark one failure for the hunt it's like a played out skill challenge and if you have three failures before you acquired all your tracking points, that means that an rival off-camera bounty hunter has caught the query before you and this bounty hunt basically for you is over. And you get a note of that because the bounty posting is updated and it shows collected. So I elaborate on this a little here, but this is basically this bounty system that I came up with and I'm interested to see how this holds up actually in the game. So here we have the fitting tables for the bounty postings, locations, clues and crimes that are committed. And then we have an NPC generator where you first determine the power level of the NPC compared to your character. And then you roll on different tables. We got species, profession, personality, quirks, clothing and body. And you combine this all to get an NPC. So this is like maybe any other NPC generator, you know, where you roll on different tables. <clears throat> then we have the section on derelict vessels. And here I repurposed something I used for fantasy, like a very simple dungeon generator. So this is a very simple generator that you can use on the fly while you're playing to generate a derelict vessel or a space station where you determine the number of accessible areas or sections and then you generate each section as you go through. It's very simple. Every section has 1D2 exits that lead to corridors and these corridors, they are straight and lead to other sections. And 
you determine the type and content of the section when you enter it and you resolve any possible encounters and so you explore until you have reached the number of accessible areas or sections. And if you basically explored all the predetermined sections but you still have unexplored corridors left because you didn't go there when you had the chance but you have already explored everything, you treat then treat these corridors as also uh, unaccessible like locked or blocked by debris or shut off by lockdown blast doors or whatever. And this is like a sample, simple layout of a of a derelict vessel or station that has like seven accessible stations. And this is easy enough to to use it while you're playing. And the idea is actually to draw this layout and to key the map by writing into the boxes what kind of section it is and what you encountered there basically. And this is how dungeon crawling works. So we're, we have some fitting tables here. We have an optional rule for tracking time. So I'm saying that you can explore two sections, including corridors in one hour. Every section takes half an hour. This includes searching for security measures, looking for valuables and carefully traversing the corridors. Then we have the, the section table and then we have a derelict vessel encounter table. And then we get to the sandbox sector generation and I also repurposed something that I used for Stardark because I think it just works where you generate the sector using dice you roll on a on a piece of paper and you note the position and the number on the dice tells you what kind of, of star system it is. But I've added the uh, security role to it and also uh, terrain roles to further uh, define the planet and then I describe the different um, star systems and every system uh, gets an illustration to invoke some some sort of, of atmosphere so that you have an idea what the system might look like so we got bread baskets we got urban sprawls we got devastated by war mining colonies heavy industry administrative centers Martial law, military blockade. We got, of course, the wretched hive of scum and villainy. We got scientific research systems. We have unexplored, untamed wild systems. We have entertainment and recreation systems and unremarkable dumps. And I'll give a little description. And I make some additional notes regarding uh, um, comp com uh, let me search for the word here. compatible compatibility with the um, security mechanism so for example an entertainment and recreation system like pleasure worlds they can't be low security because it, it does just doesn't make sense you wouldn't go to an entertainment pleasure world if if you're unsafe there so this can't be low security so this is either medium or high security and then again an unremarkable dump can't be high security and for example an administrative center is always high security so there are some systems where where there are some sort of of uh, predetermined um, security levels to make it more fitting but then of course you're also free to change this and if i don't put anything down like in heavy industry systems or bread baskets or urban sprawls you can just uh, normally roll up the security level so they are of course also very unsafe urban sprawls just think uh, nar shada or coruscant undercity so this is how this works and of course the system type should determine the main form of terrain on the planet, but then you can roll up one or two additional terrains to flesh out the system more. So that is the, uh, the random sandbox generator that I finish off with the map that I also used in uh, the Stardark, so just so that you can see how this would look like. So, um, and then it goes to faster than light travel where I basically um, uh, state that like in, in this system for every 
beginning interval of 10 hours of actual travel time, there's a one in chance, a one in 10 chance for a random encounter. And then I have a faster than light encounter table, um, which yeah, features some encounters that might happen in, in deep space. And then I'll got a section about an oracle where I explain how to use a simple percentile die as an oracle and also a section on a random idea generator where I first get into a little bit what it is and how it works and so then I got a table with these random idea prompts and then I give a few examples how you might interpret or incorporate different prompts into an encounter or event or twist. And you would use this random idea generator whenever an oracle role indicates some sort of twist or when you just need some inspiration to maybe answer an open-ended question or you want to get some more variety uh, or just you need just something to, to jumpstart your imagination. So, and um, yeah, this is basically um, it. So this is my playtest draft. I will be using this now uh, in my um, private games um, and also in my Stardock series. Um, and yeah, I will see how this works, um, play a couple of games with it. Uh, like I said, I'm already thinking about changing these encounter tables into encounter generators. I think I might do this. And um, yeah, I think I might. So I'm playing a couple of private games with it. And I think I might be releasing this in a week or so. So it's of course not an extensive playtesting period. But um, I'm putting this up for $2.99. So it's basically um, yeah, a steal. And if you're interested in trying this out yourself, um, you will be able to pick it up on DriveThruRPG in the near future. And um, yeah, I will of course also update the document if I make any changes to it. Yeah, so this is the upcoming solo RPG framework and toolbox for a space opera setting. Yeah, so um, yeah, I hope you liked this video and you got an idea of what to expect. And um, yeah, there will be another video up this weekend where I continue my uh, keep on the Shadowfell adventure and in my next Stardock adventure I will be using or I start using along with the Scarlet Hero procedures um, I'm using this solo RPG framework to see how it goes. All right so as always thank you for watching and if you just stumbled upon this channel please think about subscribing and yeah, I will see you in the next video. And as always, stay safe and stay healthy. Bye-bye.